Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm down here again at Topa Manor. They can't keep me away. My second trip, can you believe it, my entire lifetime. Gonna go down, see if I can't, luck into a carp or two, give it a bit of a try, try a few different things for you, stay overnight, do all the naughty things that I'm not supposed to do. But fingers crossed we get to show you guys some fish. Man alive, what a setting down here in the countryside it is. Fabulous. Do you know what? I can't even see a car anywhere. Oh yeah, this one. So guys, what I've got here, got my ground bait balls. I'm using, hopefully you can see, if I stand up, is that tree over there. And I'm looking at the shadow line, I'm going to go midway to the base of that with a catapult if I can. There we go. A little bit too far. Now, the guy next to me move, which is handy. That's a good one. Because I want to pound this place. I want to absolutely pound it. And this is a... Ground bait catap catapult here because it's rigid, it's got a rigid cup there. Bound together with bits of fishing line holding this here, but if I can get that out there, it'd be nice. Right on the money, hopefully. I always try and put a few shorts so that I've got like a line of bait here because when it gets dark. When it gets dark, I'm going to not exactly know the line, I'm not clipping down or anything like that. I'm just going to be fishing it. What I call dead drop, it's a long one. That's for the overcasting. Even got, look, oh my god, a Haribo sweet. That's about what I want to get, and a few shorter ones. And sort of match fishing technique. Should be enough to start with while I get the old bivvy up. You can see that shadow line. The difference between a shadow and a reflection. A shadow is going to move with the light going around. A reflection isn't. So always aim for aim for the reflections rather than the shadows. That's a short one. I'm trying to do that for the camera. Ducks will like that one. There we go. Now. I've got to attack. Oh God. Oh God. Somebody get me a brain. There's a nice feather. Look at the colours in that. Oh, you've got to see that there. Beautiful. Got to be a male mallard, I would guess. Let's put it down there for luck. There's my rice. Which, of course, you can also feed in loose. I still can't get this bloody thing to go Look, it must open out much bigger than that. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's going to take me in there anyway. Something peculiar about it. I'll keep the uh, moisture off. I think Mike bought. I think Mike bought this one for fifty quid at a show. Well, you've only got to use it. That sort of price, the size of it. 
I've only got to use it a few times and it's uh, worthwhile. My God, I've done this in about 10 minutes. I've got to turn into a carp angler if I'm not careful. Here is my mushroom. Now I could go and buy myself a nice carpy uh, sunbed, lounge or whatever they call them. Why do that? I've been camping out loads. I've got a camp bed. I've got one of these things which is called an inflator mat. And as you unroll it, actually uh, air fills up inside it. It gives you a little bit of cushion. It makes it a little bit softer at my age. So, why waste money? Just use what you've got. If you've got camping gear, use that. Having said that, that bed is a son of a gun to put together. All right, boys, I'm all set up. Got, uh, got my rig here. So I've got one bag, one boilie, inline lead, fix there so that can pull out. You can see that pulling out. Locks in here. In there I've got raisins and eight mil standard pellets. This is my first cast. I have pounded it with ground bait. Let's see, bivvies up. Tangle time. And I'm gonna go straight out about a third of the way across, hopefully. And the money. Sink that one down. Bit of left to right wind. Check that drag. Bit light. Buzzer on. Bait runner. These are all Mike's gears I'm using. Actually, going to put that wheel the other side. So you guys can see this. Cliff is bobbing on there. Well, it's about as tight as it can get. I'm going to tighten it up just so this comes up at an angle, so I want a bit of weight on the line. Out there. Then I've rigged the other one up. All ready to go. Switch on. And away we go. Another bag. I feel a lot happier with some... Uh, I see absolutely no movement out there whatsoever. And others have said it's fish dire today. So, got a slight bit of colour to it. And there we go. A couple of times through the mesh, through the PVA mesh, it dissolves in the water. For those who don't know, it dissolves. It's mesh bag. And then all your little particles are around the one with your hook in, which is there. Send this out to the left. Of that line over there. That went straight down the carp's throat, as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to sink the line straight away so it doesn't belly over top of the other one. One bump. Yeah, check the drag. I'm just going to be using my standard bobbin, a washing up top bottle. Of course they'll tell me it, I should have a newfangled one, but the last time this one worked. Now the other one I'm going to put just off that margin down here, close in. So there's my inline lead, you can just see here hopefully. It just jams in that little rubber sleeve there. Pull it in. So you've got something to tug against. And there's the bait all ready to go, just down here. I've seen no bubbles or anything moving. Something moving in there, but it could be a duck. Peter's my fish, just my fish close. I'll go a little bit further out. That's a drag. Bait runner. It's a two-speed reel, this one, if anybody's looking. It's actually a two-speed, but retrieve reel. Got a newish one on the market. Wow, pretty loud. 
Anyhow, that goes off. It goes off. Get myself organised, find another bobbin, dig around. Here we go, here's another bobbin. You're going to get peace and quiet later on, and people will go, all the day trippers will go. There's about one other guy that is actually uh, fishing all night. It looks good. It's got a strange greenish tint about it. Don't remember that last time. And I haven't seen a fish move. Guys, just hooked up first fish. Uh, I was just going to film these other guys just down there. I'm going to zoom in. Smile, ladies. <laughs> so I mustn't mess around. I'll try and get this one in for you. The lad's got theirs, hold him up, I'll zoom in on you. Good man. Thank you, sir. Here we go people. Another nice tub of carp. So you can see they just come on the bite. Well guys, had that fish about. It's already nine, ten-ish, that sort of size. Just shading the doubles there. And the other guys up there are called the Mad Catters. And they've had some uh, catfish at other waters to about 40 odd pounds. And they're followers of the Totally Awesome Army. Watch all our shows. Other guys down there watch a load of shows. <coughs> Excuse me. But, quiet at the moment, but I've now got in one of the bags, trout pellets and, I want to call it wicked tuna. Pacific Tuna 15 mil freezers. Now I've been told by Kia 
that the really serious big carp guys like using frozen baits, not shelf life boilies. He sells way more shelf life boilies though, but the guys, I'm not going to call them professionals, but the serious guys go for big carp. But apparently, generally, a tweaky bite there, generally like freezer baits. I guess there maybe is some more smell in it. I don't know. Oh, who knows? It's all new to me. Well, it's not new. I just don't use boilies. Well, I do because I've got boilies on now, but that's by the by, you know, I generally am not a boily man. So I've got all Mike's gear here set up, Bivy, the lot sitting here wondering am I going to have a fabulous session or am I going to scratch? Now, I'll tell you what I would think. My own personal opinion is the moon's coming up. I know this because Wayne was out this morning and he got a big shark, thresher shark, about 350 pounds in his boat. I had a thresher about 130 pounds last Friday. So I really want to be shark fishing, but we've got to do this story, get it on our TA show. I don't like fishing still waters with a full moon. I've never done much good. I'm hoping this cloud cover comes over. Do that again and I'll strike. I'm hoping this cloud cover, cover comes over and you know basically shuts that moon down because I do not want the moon. Look, I'd like to have a nice night's sleep but that's not the point. If I want a nice night's sleep I stay at home. You, you've got to be prepared when you go fishing you're gonna, you're gonna get a buzzer waking you up. Hopefully it's not those F1 carpy things about two pounds I can't get the boiler in their mouth I do not need them waking me up in fact I won't get up until I get a single toner the kettle is on there's the kettle he says yes that's going I'm going to have a brew I'm going to have a cup of tea in a very old 30 year old can and inside that can there's a little wire coil in there and that stops it furring up in case you guys want to know campy guys no I don't mean camp guys I mean camping guys there is in there a little wire mesh thing, you pop it in there and it stops it furring up apparently. That's what they say years ago and that's at least 35, 35 plus years old, maybe 40 years old. Wow, do I need to tell you? Anyway, trust me, the tea tastes exactly the same, if not better. It is now 8.30, I think I'll be closing down while I have a brew and then fresh baits out and that'll be me tucking myself up for the night. Beautiful evening. Absolutely no hardship. I think there's one other guy way over down the corner that might be doing an all-nighter. He had enough gear by him that he needed a removal van. Look over there, you won't see that guys. A huge amount of bubbles right over my bait. I feel, I feel my beepers are gonna beep sometime in the next six hours. What I've been doing is putting some bread down in this corner. Hopefully the ducks have gone. I've seen one fish move down here. There, look, in there. Look, 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 look. I don't know if you're gonna see this with a small camera. One piece of bread gone. He's had several bits of bread. Oh, I missed that one. Smith, Smith. There is one. I'm getting sidetracked because I love floater fishing. He's an old bottle or something in there, and he's round there. There it is, look, he's even knocking the bottle, if you can see that. Right. I feel even though I've missed that bite. I'm planning to try to get those at night. I'm going to lose the light here. I'm going to take this one in, just put a hook, cut the rig off, put a hook on, and try, to, if I can, to get a, a bait in there, at least pick one fish off. It's not a big fish. I don't know what it is, seven, eight pounds. Hey ho, a fish is a fish. This guy's been shoveling bread down like it's going out of fashion. There's been another one in here. I'm gonna try and see if I can get, winkle him out, he's in there somewhere. All I've got is a single hook and I'm locked and loaded. My temperature's just starting to bottom out a bit. Just starting to ease off, so a change of clothing is required. Ready for the night, I wanna be ready for it. Might look like a bank robber, but I'll tell you, hoodies are warm. Should go around and mug those ducks. Go get this one. Got to do this, haven't you? This is what I've seen them do this. You jam your thumbs in there, you and me, and then you can't strike the fish, can you? Sensible. That's better. 
Right, tea time. Probably mentioned this before, guys, but when you're making tea and you want to put milk in it, put your milk in a baby, go and buy yourself a small flask, and then you can keep your milk your milk cool. It doesn't go off. You put it in plastic containers and stuff like that. It might go off in the warmer weather, so I just put mine here, and as you see, it's leaked. <laughs> It's, uh, it's leaked everywhere. What a complete moron. That smell nice in the sun. What if you've ever heard that term? I've died and gone to heaven. It's when something really, really nice has happened to somebody. Maybe they've landed a 90 pound carp or something. 27 pound barbell. No, no, it was actually invented by the man who invented the art of dunking a McVitie's chocolate digestive. These things. If you can get it just right, most great. Oh yeah, that's your fault Smith. Right at the back again, causing trouble. Get to the back of the class. I'll tell you when I want to see you, you're staying after break time. Bloody Smith gives me trouble all the time. These are chocolate digestive biscuits. There is about a 20 second cutoff point when you can get them absolutely beautifully melted chocolate or they collapse and fall in a heap in your cup and you've got chocolate soup. That's perfect. <laughs> I could eat six of these in a row and then puke up in the bushes. I mean, they are deadly. Dunked chocolate digestive. I've died and gone to heaven. Mm. I've only got 17 left. They're not going to last till midnight. Mm. Lovely. I'll tell you what, they're like a drug. Do you know why? Because I haven't cast this rod out, have I? <laughs> I really am hooked on them. Oh, this is a nice fish, guys. This is a whale. This one to be a whale. There we go. Yes, sir. What dost thou think of that one? Lovely job. I'd say he's about 14. 14, 12. Less 2 is 12, 12. Nice and fat across the back. Give me a good scrap. There we go, let's get him back. Well guys, it is actually dark though. If you look at that that way you can see, and I can see in the fil in the uh, monitor here, it looks like it's blue, but it's not, that is the night sky. And I've got my floodlight photo flood on here. So it's gone really quiet. Had those two fish, 12-12 that last one, missed two other really good takes, but I don't know. I'm not carpy as you well know, but I noticed the two last rigs that I got tied up here or well, they rigged up for me. They didn't have that blowback business. Now, whether that's why I've missed two, I don't know. But he's dead, dead, dead at the moment. Nothing on the surface. I've had bread out there. The only thing that's eaten there is the roach. So maybe I will get a night's sleep. I sort of hope I don't because I want to catch something. And do you know what? There's another lake over the back where they do get all the big carp. I haven't heard any buzzers go off. It's very, very quiet. I don't like this moon. I mean, 
that's French, mean, moon, I don't like that moon at all, I know it's all the cloud, it's clearing away over there, I just got a bad feeling it's like a one fish deal all night, beautiful night though. Third fish on guys, no idea how big, very very twitchy tonight. Looks like a small fish. I'm up the tree, how lovely. I guess it's a fish around nine pounds, guys. So, not even midnight, and we got three. That's good, let's get it back. Another small one woke me up, guys. So bad I picked the wrong rod up. Yeah, this one's quite a nice looking one. There we go guys, that's quite a nice looking mirror there, woke me up, just dozing off a little bit, I guess it's about 11ish, something around there, anyway, good session now, four fish, yeah that one was right on the left hand margin rod. Guys, I'm on again. It is. I don't even want to look at the time. It's 10 to 2. How mad is it? This one does actually feel like a pretty well, pretty well double figure fish. the first one that's actually peeled me out of it. There a guy's got a fish on on the other lake as well, I can hear him talking. He's shouting for his mate and his mate's zedded out big time. I think I'll be messing around with this one somehow. Good fish this one.
three. I don't know what to make of this one, guys. He's got the other lines, I don't think. Or wherever it is, it's in the net. Say it's about 15 pounds on this one. 14, 15 pounds. Great fish. Even if it is the middle of the night. In the land of Nog, guys, a really quiet night. On, off, on, off, on, off. And I've just got another eight hooked up. Oh dear. Managed to get the other line clear, which is something. It is eight o'clock in the morning. Wow. Would be nice to finish with a good fish. Double figures, hopefully. It's a good scrapper. What a setting, so peaceful. Well, it was peaceful because I was asleep. That's yeah, not a huge fish, but it's a really good scrapper. Kids don't do this at home when you're tired. He's in. Not the greatest looking mirror I've caught. About 11 pounds I would say. But, eight fish in one session. Man, can't be bad, can it? Gone. As I was. I'm getting too old for this shit, guys. Pensioner overnight in the car, oh, there and all day. <sighs> what a setting. It is now, let's have a quick look at the watch. It's nearly 10.30. I heard last night, 
eight carp, which I feel I was owed. Biggest 14 pounds. I can write them all down. One, two, three, four. Four doubles. So you can't grumble there, really, can you? Would be nice to get a bigger one, but hey ho, that's the way the fishing is. Oh, so cosy in this hoodie. And that's my view out there. All the day ticket crowd have uh, turned up now, so inside the bivvy is, as you can see it, like a bomb site. And they gave about 24 degrees today. I'm the only person that's in a bivvy with a hoodie. But I'm so cosy. I think it's time for breakfast. The big camera, guys, is up there, frying in the sunshine. Last night I left it out all night because I was fighting fish and put my uh, body warmer over it, trying to keep the dew off it. So if you do do photography, do not leave it out, even when it's dry, because you get the dew come down on the camera. But that is my view this morning. Some other guys over there, it's all pretty dead at the moment. Whether they come up on top or not, I don't know. I think it's time for breakfast. Good. One beep, one beep, wouldn't it be something? I've been laying here, you know, looking at the flies landing on the on the outside of the bivvy. It's weird, isn't it? You just like you hear these little tick, 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 little sound of them landing. That and that rook or crow. Right, I've got to get up. I've got to move and get something on the cook, and I'll probably start packing up. I just can't get over that view. I think I'm going to call it quits. It's gone downhill now. It's hot, flat. Nobody seems to be doing anything. So thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We'll see you guys again. I'm going to start the big packing up session. I never enjoy that.